It may not look like it, but these scientists are examining this stream much like a doctor might give you a checkup. Instead of tapping your knees for reflexes or listening to your heart for arrhythmias, they're taking an inventory. And what they are counting are fish and macroinvertebrates, also known as the smaller critters and insects that the fish live on. Uh, right now we just got done uh, electrofishing our reach and now we're going to sort the fish by species uh, into different buckets and after we get done sorting them all, we're going to count them and measure and weigh them. This creek flows to the Strait River and empties into the Cannon, making it all part of the Cannon River watershed. The entire stream network, network in a watershed is um, very important. Uh, you know, everything is connected, all the waters are interconnected, you know, everything flows downstream. So what happens upstream in the headwaters of the watershed can have significant impacts on the quality of your downstream waters. The team weighs, measures, and classifies the fish they pull from this creek. Mike Feist says ditches, creeks, and streams flowing into rivers are much like the circulatory system in the human body, with blood from capillaries and veins flowing to major arteries. A reminder that good health begins in unlikely places. In, in a watershed, there's a variety of impacts, and in the biology that we see uh, in streams integrate the uh, cumulative effects of those impacts or stressors and pollutants. So, you know, you've got altered hydrology, land use, you know, nutrification. Uh, there's all sorts of issues that could uh, be affecting a place. This biomonitoring in the Cannon River watershed is going on all over the state. Each of the state's 81 watersheds are being monitored on a 10-year cycle. This work is being dramatically accelerated thanks to Minnesota voters passing the Clean Water Legacy Amendment in 2008. You know, after we are in doing our first year of monitoring, you know, it goes through assessment. We will actually assess the waters to determine if they're meeting their designated uses. Those designated uses are defined by the Clean Water Act and they center around water being fishable, swimmable and drinkable. Less obvious but just as important are the smaller pieces of the Feeder Creek food chain. Uh, the macroinvertebrate community includes things like insects, snails, crustaceans, crayfish, leeches. Good diversity is a good indicator. Certainly as far as you know, relating what we're seeing in these streams and the importance of them, it's certainly it's more of a challenge to, uh, to, uh, make, to communicate the importance of invertebrates versus fish, again, because people don't see them. Uh, they don't understand the diversity and importance of the, of the macroinvertebrates. With roughly 92,000 miles of streams across Minnesota, there is no way to do this kind of testing in all of them. Instead, they are chosen to be a representative example of what's happening in this watershed. You know, we know that we can't sample everywhere when we do our routine monitoring, but uh, where we find problems, um, there'll be additional monitoring to determine what might be causing those problems. Just as a doctor sometimes offers advice you didn't expect, these biomonitoring inventories can offer some insight into these creeks and ditches that surprise people. Either you hear, well, there's no fish in that ditch or there's no fish in that stream, when it's a real little stream, uh, you hear that quite a bit. But you also hear, oh, when I was a kid, I used to fish down there all the time and there was northern pike and, you know, we caught walleyes and most people you know, they're familiar with bass and northerns and some suckers probably, but, you know, it's not often that you get to see, you know, little darters and whatnot in the stream. So you know, a lot of times we'll stop and show them what we caught, and they're, they're surprised when you see 25 species of fish in a, in a ditch like this. Mm -hmm.